hypergrace is being misrepresented by various false prophets. While the concept of hypergrace denotes God's limitless and abundant grace, the hypergrace movement distorts this into a theological stance that promotes a lack of Christian service after salvation. Salvation is indeed through grace alone, by faith alone, in Christ alone, and believers are eternally secure in their salvation. However, hypergrace proponents teach that after salvation, believers do not need to engage in any form of service or good works. It is incorrect to claim that serving God is an attempt to earn salvation, or that it implies a lack of faith in Christ's complete redemptive work. Instead, true Christian service is about being beneficial to others and living out one's faith actively, rather than passively claiming to live by faith while doing nothing to honor God. Look at Titus chapter 3, particularly verses 5 to 8, which illustrates that salvation is not achieved through works, but through God's gracious mercy. Good works should be maintained not for salvation or to prove one's faith, but for the benefit of others. This is contrasted with the hyper-grace movement's tendency to equate faith with an absence of action, which is lazy and unbiblical. While God's grace is indeed hyper-abundant, the hyper-grace movement misinterprets and misapplies this grace, leading to a false understanding of Christian living. The movement is anti-biblical and has cult-like tendencies. I would urge all believers to embrace true grace that saves by faith in Christ, period. But then afterwards also involves active service and good works for the benefit of others, to the glory of God. Let us remember the importance of understanding God's clear word and encouraging listeners to reflect on the true meaning of grace in their lives. God's grace is a profound expression of His love and mercy, freely given to humanity despite our undeserving nature. Scripture defines grace as unearned favor, most notably in Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, which says, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. This means that salvation and the blessings we receive from God are not a result of our own efforts, but His grace alone. Titus 2, 11 says, for the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all men, indicating that grace is available to everyone through Jesus Christ. Additionally, Romans 5.20 teaches that, Where sin increased, grace abounded all the more, showing that God's grace surpasses even the greatest depths of human sin, offering forgiveness and redemption to all who believe. Through grace we are not only saved, but also empowered to live according to God's will. As 2 Corinthians 12, 9 reminds us, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. In this way, God's grace is central to our relationship with Him, offering us salvation, strength, and hope. Christians are called to do good works as a reflection of their faith and gratitude for God's grace, not as a means to earn salvation. Ephesians 2.10 reminds believers that we are His workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. This means that good works are a natural outflow of a transformed life in Christ, demonstrating His love and righteousness to the world. James 2.17 emphasizes that faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead, showing that genuine faith results in action. However, these good works are not to bring attention to oneself, but to glorify God, as Matthew 5.16 instructs. Let your light so shine before men, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Christians are encouraged to serve others with humility, love, and compassion, following the example of Jesus, who came not to be served, but to serve. Mark 10.45 Through good works... Believers fulfill God's purposes, demonstrate their faith, and advance His kingdom on earth. I hope this video helps you. God bless. Thanks for watching.